welcome back to entrepreneurship tuesday my name is michelle ashira this is definitely entrepreneurship tuesday on why in the morning make sure you follow us across all our social media platform that is at y254 channel and one thing about entrepreneurship tuesday we ensure that uh, we inform you entertain you and most definitely give you tips on how to make extra cash and that's why today we are talking about forex trading all right so uh forex trading is one of the biggest market that accounts for more than five trillion of daily trading more than five trillion on a daily trading so in studio we have daniel wesonga a man of many titles most definitely he's a preacher entrepreneur a mentor and a forex trader a successful one about that so thank you very much for creating time to be with us today thank you so for having me here all right yeah. so before we even get into the uh the money making tips Yes. When it comes to forex trading, I'd like to find out uh, your relation with money from way back. Uh, <laughs> let's say when you received your first paycheck. Yes. Were you more of a person who was looking for extra cash or are you a spender? I love to spend, but I can withhold my desire for instant gratification to, mm -hmm. to look for more money because uh, the money that I have in my hand, the first thing I think is how can it empower me to make more money before I get to the uh, to spending. Mm -hmm. So it's like I want to live off mm -hmm. the profit of the money that I've that I've made. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to forex trading, y yes, I would like you to correct me when I'm if I'm wrong. Yes. Most Kenyans shy away because mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of stories behind uh, scam and also the whole. Uh, probability of just seeing it as an illusion. Yeah. So how did you go about it? How did you get into forex trading? Wherever where there's a scam, it means there's a reality behind There's a working mechanism behind it. So mm -hmm. somebody who comes to somebody who is a novice, they mm -hmm. come with an idea too, because they know you don't know the, the dynamics. Mm -hmm. So they might blindfold you uh, and promise you maybe ins uh, get rich quick. Okay. Uh, kind of philosophy they'll front it to you. I've, I've also been scammed before mm -hmm. in terms of forex. They're told like somebody says that we have this kind of a, uh, a portal that you plug in then in six hours you'll get three times your money. I'm like wow that is that will be good because you see mm -hmm. um, but I got to learn then eventually I began to learn the disciplines mm -hmm. of it. Started trading by myself I remember the f I see, when, whenever you're signing up, actually in, in forex trading, they tell you it's a high risk market, so you mm -hmm. you stand a, a, a chance to lose all your capital. So you have to understand exactly what are you doing, when to get in, when to get out, when not to trade, and which amounts to risk for you to always be for you to be successful. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have the understanding, the market can really square you out. Yeah. All right, we'll yeah. go much into details all uh, on risk and how to go about just uh, yes. getting an account. Yes. Uh, on, on a forex market mm. but i would like to find out right mm -hmm. so this is actually an investment yes it's an investment there's and no people actually there's make money no out of this. I, I can tell you uh probably 90 percent of wealthy people they trade forex they mm -hmm. may not tell you that but they're in forex banks mm -hmm. trade forex all right yes. so uh what type of background does one uh require to be part of uh, or just engage in forex trading I don't want to say you have to have the passion and your forex is not for the faint-hearted. It's, <laughs> it's not for the faint-hearted. So okay. background, uh, sometimes people used to say that you need to have a background in finance. I don't have mm -hmm. any background in finance. And, uh, is an, and most of the people, even somebody who's having a background in finance, when I look at them, they, if they've not studied forex, I see them as somebody who does not really understand what forex is. They cannot get into it at that stage because you've come from university, then you're able, you cannot say, tell me you've come from school, then you're ready to trade forex. There's no, even if it's the forex school, you have to, to first of all get into the dynamics of it, then you, to mature into it, you have to be seasoned for you to be really fit to say that now you're profitable in Forex. So. Okay, so back in campus, yes. I had uh, I had friends, yeah? mm -hmm. and most of the time, like when I pass, like the, or maybe on a trading area, like you'll see, they're very busy on their laptops. Yes. And all, all I could see was just a black screen and just uh, uh, graphs yeah. uh, looking <laughs> like, like a hat. In campus, wow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would like to find out, is, can someone or an individual just get self-taught through so through youtube all mm. about forex trading or does one need to have like a professional like go to school have professional skills 
Uh, I normally say nobody is self-taught because even if it's YouTube, it's somebody who's making the materials. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so somebody is um, somebody is at least training you, and also mm -hmm. it's also good if you can be able to find a mentor. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's quite some material. Sometimes every ma not everything that works for not everything something that works for somebody may not necessarily work for you. Mm -hmm. So it's good that whatever you learn, you get eventually to practice it yourself. Then try to make changes because even the strategies I've also learned from people of what I operate with right now is something that eventually I had to to study it and then change things to suit my my study of the market. Now eventually I was able even to build up robots. So as uh, normally you you rarely find me now <laughs> trading so because I leave it to the robots to trade then I just check my phone wherever I am then know if the, the when the robot has picked that trade if it's viable or I should like close it and such so it's uh, after watching anything babe, or maybe you're taught you have to work it out yourself and see does it suit you or it was that person's version of of trading you spoke yeah. about robots yes so who what what is what is this robot when it comes to forex trading <laughs> just, it's, just enlighten us you, you you put the same the same dynamic that you're using in trading or mm -hmm. the algorithm that you're okay. using in trading you feed them in a robot so mm -hmm. that the robot can execute a trade based on the same decisions you make manually by your own analysis so if it's a these are the conditions that define when to buy and when to sell. Mm -hmm. So you put those algorithms in the in the in the robot, and the robot will be able to execute for you successfully. All right. Yes. Okay. So can can uh, forex trading replace uh, one's uh, full time job? It's possible. Like a nine to five. It's it's possible to replace one's full time job, but you need at least to have. It's not something that you are there in one month and you say, "Oh, I think I'm successful at getting to." quit everything and get into forex you have to be at least you even if you're working now you can do it maybe for a year and see you have a successful year consistently then you can make a decision based on that because in life they always risk and but even mm -hmm. if you're a trader you're not advised to stay on the computer like from morning to evening trading mm -hmm. you need to have a very short for, like for example i don't trade for more than two hours i cannot stay on the computer for more okay. than two hours so you find me doing other things moving around but uh, I remember that if if I am able to achieve what I want to do in 30 minutes, mm -hmm. I will I'll quit and because mm -hmm. I've I've met I've met my target, so I'll move on to do other things. So you find me doing other things. There rarely uh, very few people know that I trade forex, mm -hmm. even the people that my acquaintances and such, because they will see me moving from around one place to another, from meeting to meeting. We are working on other things, and yet. I just hide myself. I know this moment, give me 30 mm -hmm. minutes, I'll get my computer, finish what I'm doing, mm -hmm. then get back. And, yeah, mm -hmm. So it's not something that you need to be seated on the computer down to dusk. But, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. what you've said, it's, uh, it's flexible. Yeah, it's, flexi flexi it's flexible. It's flexibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's look at, for someone who wants to start on uh, Forex trading, mm -hmm. what is Forex trading? How can you explain it in the easiest term? Just break mm -hmm. it down for, for us. And mm -hmm. then how can they access uh, the Forex market to gain, to get a trading account? Yes. Forex trading uh, in, in simple terms is like you're observing the movement of asset and you expect, or you expect to buy low and sell high, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's just the same way in business where you make profit. It's like when something is you can buy at this point expecting mm -hmm. that your projection they, this is going to go up then you sell high mm -hmm. so that's basically what forex trading is there's instrument there's commodities there are there are, there are currency instruments there's commodities mm -hmm. there are indices and all those kind of uh, assets on the forex market then your other question was the next question was oh you were to explain it and actually tell us how one can actually get an account yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so there are Brokers will give you this what we call the signals or those charts that you're seeing your friends Yes, and so you you have an account you have to find a, f a, a broker that is uh, regulated by CSEC right. a Broker that's regulated by CSEC. They are the dynamics to check for uh, the Efficiency in terms of withdrawals uh, deposit and withdrawals you have to check for the efficient in terms You have to check for what we call spreads mm -hmm. uh, The spreads that the spread needs to be favorable to you and such so you are you when you find your favorable broker and then you're able now to have access so you deposit your capital and based on your capital you're able to now use your capital to trade because as you said uh, in the forex market actually it's like six trillion dollars per day yes moving in the forex market mm -hmm. so even if you make one billion dollars you won't shake the market even if you make one billion dollars in a day 
Okay, so you've told our viewers yes. to uh, to get access of a broker. Yes. How do they get access over over uh, a trade broker? Yes. Yes. A trader broker. Yes. <laughs> they are online. It's because trading you we, we do what we trade online. Mm -hmm. What individual trading is called retail, they are retail traders, mm -hmm. but they are institutional trading also. Okay. So they are brokers all over. Actually, there are many, some of them I even don't know their names, but <laughs> there are few that I use. Mm -hmm. And uh, just signing up online, you're able to provide your details. There you're able to sign up an account, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Provide your details, then you're able to deposit, then you're good to go to all start right. trading. Just like any other business, yes. you need uh, a starting capital. Capital, yeah. What is the minimal amount of capital that one can start on uh, on forex trading? It's based on what you're able to to say. I'm willing. I'm willing to risk this uh, mm -hmm. to get in the market. The the brokers. The brokers who provide as 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 a minimum, uh, even as a minimum of ten dollars, ten dollars to deposit, and you can mm -hmm. have as um, like most retail brokers, they give you a maximum of one million dollars deposit per day. Mm -hmm. You see, so based on what you're able to get you but also you need to understand what exactly what is your trading like i used to have my own arguments mm -hmm. my argument used to be like when i did if i want to become profitable because i want something that at the end of the month i say i it's rewarding to myself because if i start with ten thousand and in good business you're in or, or in forex don't tag it's like when you you need to to have real figures when you're targeting don't say like as i said when i began uh, there's a time, the first week I traded, I said, this is a good place. There's huge money moving in the market. I'm going to milk the market. Mm -hmm. So I put in 100,000. I built 100,000 to 600,000 from So this Monday is your profit to... highlight story now. You're yes, giving us. yes. Okay, we are listening. <laughs> so it's like I built uh, uh, $1,000 to $6,000 from Monday to, to Thursday and then wiped it all out on Friday. So. Wow. The thing is, mm -hmm. you need to understand mm -hmm. the amount that you have, mm -hmm. make reasonable plan. Like, mm -hmm. don't target that you're going to make more than 10% per month. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable. Now, to you, if you're saying about minimum, if you're having $100, that is 10,000 Kenyan shillings, mm -hmm. will you say that if 10% is 1,000, are you comfortable with making 1,000 per month? You see, that's where the dynamics of what governs your decisions ought to come from. All right. Yeah. Okay, I, it is not as easy as we thought. <laughs> so for the people back at home and uh, who have uh, grando grandocious uh, yes. uh, kind of mindset where they're thinking like, uh, I can just get into forex trading in mm. two weeks or a couple of months down the line, uh, I'll be boiling, you mm. know, mm. my account will be, uh, will mm. be fly. Yes, <laughs> yes. So what would be your advice for someone who is having this unrealistic, unrealistic learning curves when it comes to forex trading? Look for somebody who has an experience to tell you to really shape your perspective. The perspective is not bad. Mm -hmm. it is, it's possible, it's, it's doable, mm -hmm. but the question is the risk that is involved also at the same time, you may not be there, you may not be there in the long run, isn't okay. it? In Forex, I, I, I utilize both. For, traders have different opinions on different Forex trading mechanisms. There's what is called binary options, then there's what is called uh, the forex, the FX, the forex where you buy in terms of it closes in positions. Binary closes mm -hmm. in time. Oh. So you do you can do as, as little as a trade that lasts one minute and say, my projection is in the next one minute this this asset will go up. So there, there are dynamics that can inform you that you do probability. There's no probability, there's hundred percent probability. So you can have you can take high probability and then take a position on that. Mm -hmm. Binary options uh, give you in per minute in terms of what you've put in, it gives in in forms of percentage. So normally, uh, when I'm trading binary options, I trade when the market is at least 80% return on investment. So that I, if I place one ten dollars in the next one minute, I'm supposed to have. If it goes in my favor, I'm supposed to have eighteen dollars back, mm -hmm. isn't it? So that's binary. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's forex now, where you're you're closing on positions. You're supposed mm -hmm. you're buying. You're, you're doing a projection. Then it's gonna last up. Is no, you're not going to close at a particular time. It's going to close on when it touches that position. So you put what is called stop loss. Then take profit. Mm -hmm. With binary options, is if you have placed ten dollars, if it goes against me, I've lost the, that ten dollars. If it goes for me, 
and if it's 80% return on investment means mm -hmm. I'm having $8 after one minute. So you see the dynamics are quite different. Yes, and so, are, mm. there high, are there high risk when it comes to binary solution? Because I've had cases where people are complaining that they're actually losing way more money yes. in binary. Yes, yes, binary has high risks. Mm -hmm. And that is the one that now people also expect to make a lot. Mm -hmm. That's where I, I, I've wiped my account several times because there are some moments when some things are happening in the market and if you are not, if you're not so, mm -hmm. if it catches you offside, you can easily wipe out without knowing, isn't it? So uh, that's what bi binary is high risk, uh, is high risk, high return. There's a possibility of doubling your account in a day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. When it comes to currencies, currencies are sold are sold in pairs, right? Yes. What are the most commonly uh, traded currency pairs? Uh, the major currencies. Yes. Uh, major the major currencies. currencies like yeah. What we call Euro USD, GBP, USD Euro, mm -hmm. uh, Euro CHF, Euro JPY, USD JPY, mm -hmm. and th those major currencies from the big countries. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But mostly now, Euro USD is so we can't exactly like major. We can't. Uh, take our pair like uh, probably yeah. Zimbabwe and Kenyan <laughs> Kenya. shilling. I've, I've never seen the Kenyan, <laughs> I, I've tried to see the Kenyan shilling <laughs> trading on the Forex market, uh -huh. I've not seen it. Maybe on the Nairobi <laughs> Stock Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at scam, yes. scam stories. And uh, and that's why I was talking earlier on when we started this conversation, mm. and I was mentioning like uh, uh, there's some section of Kenyans who shy away from uh, Forex trading. They, mm. they look at it as an illusion. Yes. Because there's so many stories of scam that mm. That, that are actually there. Mm. So, how does scam happen in forex trading? Mm. The interfaces. A real forex trader will tell you realities, and most of the times when people hear about forex, they don't want the reality part. They want the scammer story. Mm. A scammer will tell you that there's no risk involved. You, I guarantee. They tell you, I guarantee, hundred percent sure mm. you get this money. You mm. double your account. A real forex trader, you tell them some figures. They tell mm. you, no, I can't help you there. You are, you are, you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. And you see, you'll be telling this forester that I, I, somebody has told me that if I invest with them, I'll get this amount of money. And that's where many people have been scammed because when it comes to money, it has a way of activating us because we always want more. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand there are disciplines involved. We'll eventually get more, but we need to grow slowly. We need to make decisions based on realities mm -hmm. that will, make us, will help us to have a consistency in growing. All right. Yeah. So I would like to find out because we have long-term traders and we have the short-term traders yes. who are actually day, uh, day the traders. day traders. Mm. So on long-term traders such as uh, the position traders, mm. do they gather more returns uh, mm -hmm. compared to to the short-term traders such as the swing traders and the day traders? Not really. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based on your trading. You see, when I'm saying short-term, mm -hmm. it's the same kind. The, the long term it means the long term traders it means they are more likely mm -hmm. whichever way even if the market goes against them they know eventually it will turn. Mm -hmm. The day traders you are you are you're on tight positions because you see it is depending on what happens in that day, so it has to it has to go for you in that day. For a long term trader even if it goes against you today or mm -hmm. even for a week, mm -hmm. you're waiting for it eventually to turn back. So eventually you win in the long run. Mm -hmm. So it's the issue of what exactly, what are the semantics in terms that govern your balancing? Yeah. So that if, what are you risking and what are you gaining? What ratios are you using? Like some people use one to one. So somebody is like gaining, is targeting 20 pips and risking 20 pips. Mm -hmm. Another person is targeting 100 pips, risking uh, 100 pips. Mm -hmm. Another person is targeting 100 pips, risking 50 pips. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that uh, if I'm losing on 50 pips and I'm targeting 100 pips, there's no problem losing. So next time I get the 100 pips, I'll have recovered the, the 50 pips that I lost in the previous trade. So, yeah, so you, and then you need to have a specialization in the specific mm -hmm. asset that you want to trade because not every asset behaves the same way. Though the basic dynamics of the market, everything behaves almost the same way. But you have to understand the specific currency that you're used in because you have, you have to familiarize yourself with the movements. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so I'll let's find out. How can one use uh, leverage to mm. get good returns when it comes to trading? Yeah, the leverage. The, the brokers give you leverage. Mm -hmm. The leverage helps you to open higher positions. But mm -hmm. you know now also, there's, when somebody is, is saying that uh, I'm having a leverage of 1 to 100, it means for mm -hmm. every dollar that you're having, the broker is giving you an open position. Like you have like 100 times there. But that only gives you like power in terms of the lot that you'll be able to open. 
but you need and is there limited uh, yeah. limited leverage yeah y yes there's the, there's some depending on the broker there's some mm -hmm. giving uh, up to like in the usa right now they're trying to limit them to uh leverage of one to fifty okay. you see and then the brokers that you have one to one one to eight 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 isn't mm -hmm. it one to one thousand one to five hundred as maximum and such so depending on the broker they'll give you the the leverage that mm -hmm. is yeah so the higher the leverage is uh, you need to pick up because if it moves if you take a huge lot size it means mm -hmm. the just a slight movement against you can wipe out your mm -hmm. account so you need to really be sure of what you're doing mm -hmm. when you're utilizing the leverage okay mm -hmm. speaking about profits yes let's talk about profits mm -hmm. Are there strategies that mm -hmm. one can uh, can acquire mm -hmm. to ensure that you have consistent gains? Yes. No matter the numbers, n no matter the random outcomes mm -hmm. on uh, numbers of trades, mm. is is there a strategy to ensure this yes. constant? Yes. 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 Strategies are involved. Forex is not gambling. Forex is a science. There's a science. What what everything you're seeing in the market has information on what has already passed in the market. Mm -hmm. There are positions that are already passed in the market that begins to give you support and resistance. So, and most of the times, so you see that tra there are different trading semantics. The traders who are called reverse trend traders, mm -hmm. and then those traders that follow the trend. Mm -hmm. I've done both, and I eventually I came to like I normally have this saying that don't try to fight the trend. The trend is your friend. So follow the trend. Where, find the trend mm -hmm. where it's moving, then join the trend. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, eventually be able to know when the trend is dying. Mm -hmm. There's a time when the trend is strong, then when the trend is dying. And regardless of what you do is an issue of probability. So when you're doing that, you say this high probability dynamic. So mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing sorting, eventually only run 10 trades, at least have seven trades that have gone in your favor. That would be a good. So you see, net, uh, in the net trade, eventually you're making net profit in terms of in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. So don't risk much. You see, sometimes when I'm starting to trade, most of the times when it's gone in my favor, mm -hmm. I'm seeing some little cash, I close it. I say, let me just take it. Let me not wait for it to take profit. But eventually when one trade goes against me, it means it wipe out your the three of them. Mm -hmm. So I learned that like, you need to maintain the discipline of the position. Do your technical analysis, understand what informs your take profit position, stop loss position, and allow yourself to to live by the rules that you're trading with. So, and sometimes it's good, uh, in trading is, there's something good that you can do is like, if it has gone right deep into the money aspect, you can move the stop loss into a positive, from the negative side to the positive side. So with that, you can go to sleep. So <laughs> I know that even if it turns a back, uh -huh. it will eventually hit stop loss, but in the money. So, Mr. Daniel, what you're trying to say is that it is, there's a probability and yes. it's a fact mm. that we can have people who actually trade like a pro. Yes. I trade like a pro. <laughs> hey, okay. Yes. So let's look at some of the risks because we have talked about the fact that you might lose your money mm -hmm. in this. Uh, just like any other business, right? Mm. So what are some of the risks that mm. comes with Forex trading? Yeah. The risks that come with Forex trading is, mm -hmm. uh, it, is it is human risks. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that informs you need to do your technical analysis to understand, to be informed. You, are you doing an informed trading or are you just gambling? Mm -hmm. So when you're doing an informed trading, you're able to understand the risk, what is called money management. Mm -hmm. Don't risk more than 1% of your account or, you see, mm -hmm. every person has what, what you want to risk determines what, when you want high risk, you want high gain, high risk, high reward. So at least by, if, if the week has gone bad against you, don't lose 10% of your, you always come back and you make the money. But if you, you, you risk 100%, it means, if I put in 100% risk, it means if it goes against me, I'm going to wipe my account. Mm -hmm. If I put 1% risk, it doesn't matter whether, if I've lost 1% of my account, I'm still in the, in the business, mm -hmm. you see. And I'm knowing that I'll eventually make it when I'm able to catch, to catch there. So those are the dynamics that invo are involved. You have to have a trading strategy. You have to have a money management strategy. Then, of course, your emotions. How people lose money in Forex is you're making assumptions. For example, the, you put, say, my stop loss is this, or somebody says, I don't want to lose much, so they put a tight stop loss. So technically, what they made their prediction, how the market is supposed to go, is the right direction, but they put a, a strict stop loss. So it has to be an informed stop loss. So eventually it goes, touches the stop loss, but eventually goes in their favor. You see, so 
all those things need to be in place so that you, you need to have an informed decision, put a, a, a reasonable stop loss so that sometimes the market can go against you, but eventually it peaks and goes and takes profit. Then don't risk all the amount mm -hmm. at a time, even if you are sure that this trade is this high probability trade by the rules mm -hmm. and you'll be able to make money in the long run. But you're the one who was telling me like the higher the risk you take, yes. the higher the returns. But, but you see, anytime you're saying the higher the risk, it means uh, you can also lose everything. Okay. I've lost, I've, I've ever made, I've ever made 240,000, 270,000 in one minute. And I've ever lost 2 million in 10 minutes. Okay. Yes. So during these times of coronavirus, uh, mm. the pandemic, so many people have lost money yes. uh, in the stock market. So many businesses had to close and employees had to be laid off because of uh, uh, employers couldn't sustain operations. Mm -hmm. Is Forex market mm. a recession-proof activity? It's quite recession-proof. Actually, Forex traders made a lot of money during this. Uh, at the beginning of, I think, the first month of this uh, corona issue and they're going they're, they're starting to have lockdowns in countries and such mm -hmm. retail forex traders actually made a volumes of around 50 billion dollars in that month alone mm -hmm. 50 billion dollars you see so because the forex trade actually f traders we take advantage of negative news we, we when when the economy is shaking traders are smiling because mm -hmm. that time now the directions are quite defined when you say people lost money in stocks and such you see that's a direction that is there's some asset I've never traded uh, before, like I've never traded Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But I remember there's one time at 2 a.m. I check my phone and I see the direction of Bitcoin. I said, and I, I knew that surely this one I, will, I know for sure. Because what direction are we looking at right now? Yeah. Because you've seen like there's certain direction that you look at and you're yes. like, this is the time to actually invest. Yes. Directions are asset based. Okay. So it's like when you say Euro USD, for example, right now, most assets are, that are against USD, they are gaining, quite, they are quite stronger because of the things happening in the US. Mm -hmm. So you see, so Euro USD is more on a buy trend. There's USD ZAR, ZAR is the South African run, mm -hmm. is, is, is been going down. So I, I was checking this morning, so it's consolidating, mm -hmm. it's about to turn and such. So it's various, is asset based in terms of what is happening with this versus this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we keep on mentioning like forex trading is like any other business and mm -hmm. things can go wrong. Yes. Reminder. Yes. So losses are there. Mm -hmm. So how can a trader mm -hmm. uh, manage temporary uh, drawdowns? Mm -hmm. Temporary. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with temporary. <laughs> you've instant, traded, you've, mm -hmm. gone, you've gone through a loss. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that? Uh, when you're talking about now money management and then the money, margin, money management and then tra trading strategies. For instance, uh, consider this person has like has lost. Yes. Yes. If you have a strategy, because you need to have a strategy that is when you're saying high probability, it means mm -hmm. that strategy is a science by itself. Mm -hmm. It's something that it's informed. For instance, you're trading Euro USD mm -hmm. and saying by this dynamics, mm -hmm. Euro USD is supposed to go by, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then you buy. Let's say now you you lose that trade. Most likely, it won't repeat the same structure three times uh, like for example you say buy and then eventually it consolidates it turns back and then you know there's another downtrend you mm -hmm. see you join the trend you see eventually you're able to recover the losses in the next in mm -hmm. the next trend so mm -hmm. once uh the drawdowns that are involved is you, that's why you're saying you don't risk your entire account because if you wipe out your account it means when the another time the market is in your favor you may not be able to recoup your drawdowns mm -hmm. but if you're using small risk it means you still have money in your reserve mm -hmm. that next time you're able to come back and you're able to recover your drawdowns mm -hmm. yeah all right mm. very interesting there Mm. Very educative. Yes. So let's finalize by looking at the psychology of winning for traders. Mm. So how does a winning trader uh, mm. think? Because you said you were a winning trader, right? Yes, yes. So how does a winning trader think? A winning trader knows that I'm able to make money, but at the same time, I can lose money. So, uh, and when I'm, I lose, it's mm. nothing strange to me. Losing is not something that is strange to me. Mm -hmm. So when I'm losing a trade does not throw me off balance emotionally. You won't find me stressed and saying that you see the trade is going against mm -hmm. me or I'm checking my phone and it's in the negative. We call it in the, in the reds. We say the account is bleeding, isn't it? <laughs> so mm -hmm. the winning trade, are you, the stability of your emotions is supposed to be like my, I, I know I'm a trader and I know my, my art of mm -hmm. trading. And 
even if things are looking this way, you know, eventually I'll get into the money. So it is, we understand that this is the semantics of the Forex market. So even if it's going on the negative, eventually mm -hmm. you turn back to the positive. So I'm stabilizing my emotions because anytime you're, you're not stabilizing your emotions, you mm -hmm. begin to falter the rules that's supposed to govern your trading. Mm -hmm. And that's where many people get beaten. If you, the strategy that you're using works mm -hmm. and you keep by the rules, eventually by the end of the day you will win. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, if the, the market triggers your emotions, mm -hmm. so that you need to put emotions aside and say, mm -hmm. you're not trading by the emotions, I'm trading by the rules and mm -hmm. eventually you make money in it. So, All right. yeah. So let's consider in a situation when, when uh, uh, a trade goes wrong. Yes. Okay, so how does one manage and overcome negative emotions? Mm. Yeah, because it can be devastating mm. if you had invested a couple of thousand, maybe, Five hundred thousand, then mm. another uh, another investment comes mm. through, and you just lost everything. How do yes. you deal with negative emotions? How to deal with negative emotions? Utilize them and say these are learning mm -hmm. lessons. I say sometimes when you tell when a trader has lost money, we say that is school fees. That is what you spent to learn something, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, that is what you spent to learn something. So turn your emotions to become positive in a way that because. As I, as I was starting, I said trading is not for the faint-hearted. Mm -hmm. So you, the emotion that you use, because you can get out of, like somebody can say, I tried this thing, it failed, you see. And, but other people are succeeding in it. But every person that has a success, they have a story mm -hmm. of how they became successful. Mm -hmm. So turn your emotions to become lessons to you and know that your emotions teach you that next time, you see, like how you're beaten. Mm -hmm. When you're beaten by something, there's an emotional, there's an emotional impact. You say that this is a lesson that I took by the beating that I received in that particular kind of a situation. So I'm able this time around to maintain the discipline so that I may not get back into what I had before. All right, yeah. let's look, for, uh, look, at, look at a situation whereby mm. uh, someone back at home has, uh, has been with us in this mm -hmm. particular conversation and has decided to actually take, uh, take up this profession very serious yes. and uh, pursue it. Mm. How can this person program their mind? Yes Totally program their mind mm -hmm. that they're actually in this yes. and they're here to win. Yeah. Yes. First of all, is what is what is your motivation to trade forex? Is it because mm -hmm. you had the, there's a lot of money moving in the forex market, or mm -hmm. is it something that you're motivated to do because you feel you have a passion in those kind of direction, the, the way that those dynamics work? Mm -hmm. So, if you are motivated just because of you hear there's money in the forex market, it means you may be coming in gambling. Mm -hmm. But you need to come because of the the same way you have a passion. Somebody can say I have a passion in hotel industry, so I have mm -hmm. a passion in this. So you need to have a personal passion mm -hmm. in the forex. So. When you go in, of course, there will be learning. There will be mm -hmm. a learning curve that you need to take. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in the discipline to learn. Mm -hmm. Of course, every broker, they provide what is called the demo account. So you can be able to test or test yourself to the demo account and eventually you're able to put in the money. The, you're told most of the times, when you find a trainer, they tell you, try your strategies in the demo account over a period of time and see the success in your demo account and try to replicate the same into the real cash. Oh, right. Yeah. So the demo account, uh, it's, a, it's a platform it's a, just it's a to dummy practice. money, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Yes. Uh, Daniel was stronger there. Yes. A forex trader by profession. Yeah. You're good at it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for creating time for us and just uh, educating us on matters uh, pertaining, uh, pertaining forex trading. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to use this opportunity and just uh, let people uh, catch up with you. The guys who are actually looking forward to get into this uh, like full time yes. as a profession or even part time, right? Yes. So how can people reach out to you on social media? On social media, you can get us on our Facebook page called uh, there's a Facebook page called Metron Forex. You can be able to get us there. Then we'll be able to direct you to a to a uh, it's called a Telegram channel. Then there's a website called MetronCapital.org. You're able to get us there. All right. One thing that I'm so sure of, yes. uh, I'll be looking for you. I need to I need more lessons. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank so you. So guys, back at home, make sure you follow up with Daniel uh, with Songa there, a Forex Trader. So I would like you to head on to our social uh, media uh, account. That is at Y254 channel. That is on our Facebook. We have a question for you. And the question is, uh, of course, good morning. How would you turn laundry services into a successful business? How would you turn laundry services into a successful business? The hashtag deals is the... Hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday and hashtag Why in the Morning. You can find me at Michelle Ashira. So right now, we'll be taking a, a musical break and we'll be right back with more of Matters Button in Business.